All right. Do you want to do some preliminary? Well, there, there's some uh, interesting background. It just, Wait, uh, let, me, let me tell the date and what we're going to be doing so that we'll uh, have the title for our <laughs> today is Sunday, September. No, scratch that. Today is Sunday, October the 1st, 2023. And Reverend Dr. Mendel Adams and myself, Vicki Adams Warnicky, are having another episode of Mendel sharing his memories and his musings. How's that? Sounds like a real catchy title. I know. We got to come up with a better title. <laughs> Uh, uh, Vicki, uh, there, this little book here was given to me by Carolyn McAvoy oh. for a Christmas gift uh, on uh, in 1975. Now that was when I uh, went to the legislature in uh, in Indiana, uh, and. Uh, I decided that I was going to write things down having to do with my political life. And I, I wrote down probably about, oh, I don't know, eight or 10 pages and then quit doing it. I've so gotten away. I've just got a hodgepodge and I've got several of those little books floating around. I've, I've probably got at least three or four of those little books floating around and, and got a, a whole series of papers and stuff like that are in them and so I thought the other night I thought well I was reading that and it, I was thinking about uh, the uh, UAW strike and the fact that in uh, 1978 uh, when I was uh, leaving uh, I already decided I was going to leave the uh, Indiana and move out of state. I lost the election. We'd gone through the ERA thing, uh, all those kinds of things going on. My business had gone downhill uh, and I was in kind of a despondent time. But the uh, labor committee that I put together with John Tolbert when the uh, uh was in the box factory there in the Marion. He was the chair and he asked me if I would march with the UAW strikers from Gas City, Indiana to Upland, Indiana. And this morning on my way home from church, the name of the fella that was a management guy that, that owned the factory, which was Avis, there in Upland uh, came to my mind and I remembered his name. So I Googled his name. As a happenstance, he turned 90 years of age this year and died Friday of this week. Oh my goodness. His name was Leland Boren. And uh, he was the guy that uh, uh, was refusing to meet with the uh with the uaw people and so they asked me if i would come and say a prayer okay so i wrote a prayer and it's a wonder they didn't drive me out of town but as you'll notice in the prayer they did ended, drive you out of town dad <laughs> i ended the prayer with a uh curse oh the oh I don't mean a cuss, I mean a curse. Right. Okay, so here's what I wrote in this little book. And I wrote this in 1978 when I wrote it in there. A prayer written and delivered by Mendel Adams in June 18th, 1977 at Grant County, Indiana Labor Rally, Upland, Indiana, after March to protest management decision not to negotiate with the UAW local. <clears throat> Approximately 100 persons march from Gas City, Indiana to Upland. And uh, I was wearing my cowboy boots. I don't know if you remember me wearing cowboy boots, but I was wearing them. My feet were really sore during that time. But here's what I prayed. <laughs> oh, God of justice, who commands all persons everywhere to turn from their evil deeds and repent. 
we beseech thee in the name of that skilled craftsman from Galilee, whom we have learned to call Lord, that we may be strengthened in our just resolve to encourage these brave brothers and sisters who like the people of old have refused to bow their backs beneath Pharaoh's lash. These thy children are walking tall today. Despite a state law that allows illegitimate replacements, who we must confess to calling scabs in our unguarded and unliving moments, to take the jobs of legitimate workers who are on strike and are thus depriving them of their only nonviolent source of strength in collective bargaining, these thy children are walking tall today. In spite of Pharaoh's taskmasters who are determined to break the union and who refuse to bargain honestly and seriously, seemingly willing to spend any amount of money to postpone justice and to entice thy children to return to Egypt, these thy children are walking tall today. In the face of a court system, which forgets that its sole purpose for existence is to ensure the just administration of laws so that the common people, thy children, who are not big shots around town, may be protected in the free exercise of their constitutional right to speech, assembly, and association. These thy children are walking tall today. Although pressured by bill collectors, mortgage foreclosures, utility cutoffs, threats of imprisonment, and even attempts on the lives of their sleeping children, these thy children are walking tall today. Despite a monopolistic news media whose own history of labor relations is so clouded as to belie any pretense of objectivity in reporting the issues or events surrounding this strike in a community which is not keenly sensitive to the demands of justice, in which oft times loses heart and counsels the oppressed to quietly accept the inevitable of their lot and go back to work, these thy children are walking tall today. O God of the carpenter of Nazareth, forgive, we pray, our bitterness and, and unloving spirits. Bring reason to the furious minds of the oppressors of thy children everywhere. Confuse, we pray, the secret counsels of mine enemies. May their high-powered lawyers and hired strike breakers stand shamefacedly before your pristine demands for justice. Hold up to public ridicule the hypocrisy of the courts and its officers who strong-arm our brothers and sisters, the legitimate workers in this plant, in order that illegitimate usurpers of their jobs and wages may prosper. Deliver us all from faint-heartedness and weak resolve that someday your will may be accomplished on earth as it is in heaven. As a witness against this place, I am now following the ancient admonition of our Lord Jesus who said, if they receive not your witness, shake the dust of that city from off your feet. Amen, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. And then I took a red bandana and knocked the dust off my shoes and left. Amen, amen. And all the people said. Vicki, that is really <laughs> radical. That was radical. Oh, Jesus. I do remember you saying, you know, I'm brushing off the dust of this. I, in fact, I remember when we actually left Marion and because we left kind of at, I have this vision we left in the middle of the night, but I don't know if it was dark. And I think we stopped just across the county line and you got out and walked. <laughs> I remember, I don't know if you did that, but that's my memory. I don't know if we had to stop well, for a reason. A terrible but, curse. Uh, Jesus said that if the disciples 
knock the dust of that city off their feet that it'd be worse for that city than it was for Sodom and Gomorrah in the days of Jesus. Oh my God! But did That's they a... all cheer for you? I mean, I bet you got. Oh yes! Oh yeah! yeah. They cheered yes. for Jesus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, oh my God, Dad, that was 1977, and it's 19, it's 2023, and that is still so relevant. It's it, it's it, it was the UAW. And I thought of the UAW and uh, and how that and how that was. You know, I had a hundred percent record with them when I was in the legislature. Oh, and I remember we weren't allowed to cross any of the picket lines. And <laughs> I think I remember. I know the teacher picket lines. We would even like take drinks. I would go up and talk to them when we lived on Fourth Street. I would go talk to the teachers because I went a lot across the picket line and of course they all knew me. And and I have this vague memory of us even taking cookies to somebody <laughs> on some picket line. But well when they when the, the teachers, what was her name? Stevenson was her last name. I forget her first name now. But she was a teacher there, was a an older teacher, uh almost at retirement, very highly uh honored and uh her husband's name was stan stevenson and they owned a little uh, restaurant there in town but she was a teacher and when the marion people went on strike the marion teachers went on strike and we had moved i forget where we lived now i, th I think we lived in uh i think we lived in up in michigan uh, and I sent I sent a bouquet of flowers to her at the jail, and the the sheriff who was a Democrat sheriff said he wasn't about to lock her up. So instead, she stayed at the at the uh, sheriff's home, which was attached to the jail, and she <laughs> stayed there with the sheriff. And they delivered those flowers from me to her. <laughs> Margaret was her name, Margaret. Stevenson. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I I really couldn't afford the flowers, but I sent them to her anyhow. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. That's um, funny. Well, I also remember, you know, fast forward to nineteen ninety. Yeah, I was pregnant with Peter, and we were all living in Oklahoma City, and you guys got tickets for all of us, you know, to go to Nutcracker. And there was a, but it was informational. Informational picket. But you weren't, we weren't sure. And you went up and talked to them and they said, no, no, it's, it's okay. You can go. And uh, Ron was kind of stunned that you would have spent all this money on the tickets for the five of us to go and then us not go because there was a picket line. I said, well, honey, this is, this is the way we do things in our family. <laughs> No, there ain't no scab in our family. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is that is. You know what? I think when I make this recording, I'm going to uh, tag the UAW on it. If that's okay. Oh, good. Good. And let yeah. them hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody the other day said that. The 1970 to now is the same number of years as like 1918 to 1970. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what did you preach on today? Actually, it was kind of a, a farewell sermon. Oh. Uh, I told him I'm not going to take any more gigs there. And uh, I'm not going to take any more. I'm going to just spend the rest of my time at the Plymouth Church doing, you know, I told him I'd take that job. And so I, I'm i going to do that. Okay. So I'm not going to take any more gigs. And it's probably a good, a good thing for me not to, Vicki. I'm finding it. Um, I enjoy doing it after I've done it, but uh, it's. Um, Building up it's to it is a challenge. More and more of a. Of a uh, back to the UAW prayer. Did did there 
I mean, I know we moved shortly after that, but was there any other fallout from it or any other? I, I don't know. I, okay. I never, uh, I never saw anything or heard anything. I did talk with the people from uh, the uh, uh, Chronic Trivia. I mean, the Chronicle Trivia. Uh, I did talk with uh, Jack McManus, who was the uh, uh, reporter that was walking with us. I did talk with him about it, and I told him that uh, that that was a, a curse. That was a a, a, a Christian curse. That I was placing upon the yeah. community. And, uh, Your hair is fine. <laughs> I know, but it, see, it's backwards. <laughs> it is. It's, yeah, it comes out backwards on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> All so, right. Papa. Well, thank you. That was thank you. Very. I, uh, I don't know that you know. It it just seemed like that that this these things were coming together. And yes. then when I found out that, that Leland Bourne was 90 years of age, which meant that he's five years older than me, and that he died just this last Friday. Wow. On September 29th, he died. Mm -hmm. Was he still and living in Indiana? Still living there in Upland. Wow. And was quite prominent, very, very uh, successful businessman and gave lots of money to everybody do you know if the strike ended shortly after that i don't know you don't know okay yeah I don't know. yeah I, I was in such a desperate state uh psychologically then that i i don't know yeah i know i, really was. I could tell you were you were really despondent when we were i was in deep depression yep yep I was just 13, but I knew it. I could tell. Uh, well, living in your sister's basement didn't help for yeah. that summer. But, but you know, you and pulled living yourself in, by the bootstraps. Living in my, in my brother-in-law's house was also a source of despondency. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Oh, well. Anyhow, but we survived. We did. We did. Came out stronger on the other side. Yep. Yep. All right. One of the best things that ever happened to me is losing that election, Vicki. Exactly. I, you know, I even say that one of the best things that happened to me educationally was you losing the election and me, you know, not being stuck there in Marion. Yep. Oh. And you eventually getting out to mine, Rod. Right? right. Oh my gosh. That. I realized even more and more how amazing that school system was and how great it was. Yeah. Well, so the, the Air Force. That's right. That's right. I <laughs> insisted it be done, and it was done. Exactly. 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 Okay. All right. Well, well thank you. The kids okay? Yeah, they're doing well. They're doing well. Peter helped. Uh, yesterday with me decorating for the birthday party and uh, Caitlin was doing some hair. So she, they, they moved uh, a couple weekends ago. They moved to, from this little house they were renting to an apartment. Oh. And the apartment's act, apartment is actually much bigger. And it's on the first floor. It's really nice. And mm -hmm. so they had bought a washer and dryer when they first got married and they had a washer and dryer hookup at this little house. Well, they don't have that at the apartment. So wow. we get the benefit of their washer and dryer and uh, we're storing it for them and using it. And so it's a nicer than the washer and dryer we had already. So, so that was nice. But, Good. Well, something happened to the machine here and uh, I just lost uh, both of our pictures, but I'm still hearing your voice. So I can still see you. How weird. All right. Well, we'll sign off and. Uh, All right, honey. You have Take a good care. week. Love you. Stay well. I love you too. All right. Bye. Bye.